There's something mysterious and beautiful about broken, abandoned worlds. So let's make the environment you see on screen right now together in Unreal Engine 5, Substance Painter and Blender. I try to share as much as possible in this short video, but if there's anything I left out then feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll do another video about this. Now the first step is to gather a lot of reference. This is not just important to know the basic shapes and forms of things, but also you can get general ideas of what you might want to add to your scene. In this case, I wanted to go for a corridor-like scene that I stumbled across when replaying the first part of The Last of Us. I took a lot of screenshots from the in-game environment and gathered them in a free software called PureRef. With all our reference gathered, we can move on to the next step in the process. The blockout is the most important step in the process. I think about what I want the viewer to look at, and I also make sure that I get a good overall composition. I also try to set up the basic lighting to get an idea of what the finished scene might look like. It's always a good idea to see how your blockout looks like in Engine. To quickly send the scene from Blender to Unreal Engine, I use something called USD files. I select everything and go to File Export as USD. In Unreal, I ensure that the USD plugin is enabled. I go to Edit, Plugins, and search for USD Importer. I enable it and restart the engine. By now going to Window, Virtual Production, and USD Stage, I get a new window where I can open my just exported USD file from Blender. Now I create and save a new default cache, and tick Don't Ask Again. If I now want to update any changes from Blender to Unreal, I select everything in Blender and export to the same USD file. In Unreal Engine, I can now go to File, Reload to reload my USD stage, and my changes will be updated. I tried multiple different techniques to get these god rays in the image, but I ended up just simulating them in the engine. Now, to find the right sun direction, I will press Ctrl L on my keyboard and move my mouse around until I find something I'm happy with. We need to set our exposure up correctly. I add a post-process volume and set it to infinite extent unbound, which makes it affect the entire scene. I play around with the exposure settings until I find something I'm happy with. I select my exponential height fog and search for volumetric fog and enable it. Then I switch to my directional light and search for a setting called volumetric scattering intensity. I will boost the setting up to quite a high number and then play around with some extra view blockers to intensify the god rays. If we now switch back to our exponential height fog, we can play around with the extinction scale and find a setting we like. Getting these settings to look right is quite tricky and I would encourage you to take a look at some other god ray solutions if you want to try this for your own project. As I use very standard texturing techniques in Substance Painter, I won't go over the workflow in detail. But if you would like to see this, then please let me know and I will record another video. A quite big part of this render is the floor, which I sculpted in ZBrush, and then baked down in Substance Painter on a lower resolution mesh. I couldn't use Nanite for this, as I wanted to utilize Vertex Painting, which unfortunately still doesn't work with Nanite. Talking about vertex color, I set up a simple vertex color material for both the walls and the floor, so that I could add some extra variation. To stay organized, I separated my different material layers into different material functions so that I wouldn't cause a big mess in my master material. With the big props in place, it's time to add some extra variation through Megaskin's assets and props, which makes the scene come to life. When placing foliage, most people rely on the scattering techniques, but for this small scene, I decided to place most plants by hand as it gives me more control over the individual flowers, and scattering just wouldn't make any sense here. With the scene almost finished, it's time to create some background buildings using Ian Hubert's technique. I took a very simple image plane of a building and modeled over that to create more detail. 
In Unreal, I added some extra foliage, uh, some signs, and some extra stairways, which makes the thing pretty believable. With the scene complete, we can now work on some post-processing and we can export our finished renders and cinematics to upload them to ArtStation. When it comes to post-processing, I usually only change a few things. I add a slight vignette, sharpen the image, play around with the temperature, and I also tint the image using the gain. When taking the final images, make sure to switch to the highest scalability. Since we're using some volumetrics here, they just look a lot better if you're on cinematic. Just make sure to turn it back to epic or auto after you're done, because otherwise your scene will start to lag a lot. Now to actually render your scene, create a new cinematic camera actor. You can now set up the focus, focal length, as well as the aspect ratio and start framing your shot. To actually render your scene, press G to enter game view and use the pie menu at the top to take a high resolution screenshot. I also like to create a few cinematics over the scene. To render our finished cinematics, we first enable the movie render queue plugin in the settings. We restart our editor and open the window. I export using a image PNG sequence as the default settings work just fine for me. Just make sure to save your configuration so that you don't have to set it up every time. And there you have it, your own finished corridor environment. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, then please let me know in the comments. That's it with me and see you in the next one.